built into reality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I feel honoured to be here and I'm more than happy to offer some thoughts on my experience and the complexity of the relationships and interconnections between place, art, design and heritage in a digital context. In particular, I would like to share my understanding of designing for country <coughs> as an advocate. In this position, relationality, intersubjectivity, embodied experience, self-reflexivity are key and the agency of place is recognised. I'm speaking as a researcher practitioner and what I would like to do today is to circle. I want to circle around, around place, country, design and art, design practice and digital practices and their relation and our responsibility to these manifestations of intangible heritage. We're meeting today on the Ngunnawal country and I pay my respects to the elders past, present and future and traditional owners of this place as custodians of knowledge. I also acknowledge the work that is done across Australia by Aboriginal knowledge holders and custodians in their work to maintain their culture in the face of the t determined attempts of erasure that they have experienced. My understanding of these struggles has been heightened by my participation since 2003 in the project Traditional Knowledge Recording Project, the Communicating Shared Traditional Knowledge Project, the Traditional Knowledge Revival Project, the Living Knowledge Place and in the Indigenous-led Fire Sticks Network that is concerned with the revitalisation of Indigenous practices of cultural fire directed towards the health and wellbeing of country and people. In particular, I acknowledge Victor Stephenson and the Kukutaipan elders, now deceased, who had the vision to share their fire knowledge with communities across Australia, and Oliver Costello, who has worked with communities across the eastern seaboard to build mentoring and knowledge transfer processes appropriate to Aboriginal culture for communities. And because I'm in Canberra, I would like to mention Dean Freeman, who is working with Fire Alliance and currently on country in the ACT, working tirelessly alongside many others bringing cultural fire practices and a respect for country into the management and practices of landscape in this place. So I'm a settler in this place. I'm a stranger, but with a deep abiding respect and love for the places that I've come to know on this land that has had continuing living cultures for more than 60,000 years. My parents, 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 on both my mother's and father's side, came to Australia 200 years ago and settled in Victoria, Tasmania and Queensland. My heritage harks back to Wales, England, Scotland and Scandinavia. During my early life, my understanding of stranger was developed as I am the daughter of a diplomat. My father was a trade commissioner so living in Singapore, in India, in Germany, in Switzerland and in England, to return as a stranger to live in Canberra. I've lived in Sydney since 1970 and the last 40 years I've lived in Balmain. However, it is only recently that I understand that I'm living on Wongal land. I only know because it is a gift to us, a gift to me and to all of us by local Aboriginal people as they reclaim their place and their stories. It's because of their generosity and openness and sharing that I've experienced that I'm coming to know the deep connection for country that is First Nations worldview. I'm becoming less a stranger and opening to a worldview that sustained and sustains this land and the people that are here. But I'm also a stranger in another way. My recognition of my position as a stranger and outsider is not only in relation to place and traditional culture, but also as a designer and a transdisciplinary practitioner. 
Dis disciplinary structures in Western culture are not generous. And the discipline of design as a recent arrival means a designer needs to understand and resist a culture of naturalising the designer as an instrumental service provider. My non-adherence to the expectation of the designer has manifest as a determination in the positioning of myself as a creative researcher concerned with reflexive practice, creative and imaginative speculation directed towards social change. I'm an activist and an advocate that works alongside others to demonstrate the coexistence of multiple worldviews through visual communication. In this project, I work across design and art with scientists and researchers, but today I'm focusing on the work that I feel I've been invited to speak about um, that has been generated from working alongside Aboriginal communities. My work over the past 20 years has incidentally focused on place. I mean, people come unexpectedly to what they do, and it is interesting when you look back, how did this happen? I've, since 1999, I began my first adventure and I went out and worked with the Kiwong mob at Koba with UTS students and we started building an oral history of the Kiwong mob. And during that work, um, I had my first experience on country, sitting around the fire, hearing the stories. Um, and that oral history, started in 1999, was not published till 2013. So that gives you a sense of the timelines that um, I've been working within. Um, the work alongside, and then following that, since 2002, working with Victor Stephenson, Jason DeSantolo, Oliver Costello, and Danielle Romek. All this work has digital manifestations, and this is where the interesting thing about digital and the intangible heritage. Much of the, work of the, much of the record of the work is available as content on digital platforms for digital distribution, whether it's 4K, uh, web, we've done 4K video for exhibitions, photographs, animations, we work with Vimeo sites, we've, uh, we've developed this website, which I'm actually not going to work, open up, but if you want to have a look, there is a story of the alliance there that, and what the current activities are with the Fire Sticks Alliance. We've developed printed communication in collaboration with local um, community. We've done reports, seasonal calendars, posters, and also built templates for communities to use, which we're trying to work out how to um, test. Participants use social media. Um, they do a lot of work on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, the work is always situated in a participatory and collaborative space. This is another website that Victor has um, put together, which is stories from all over Australia, videos that are Indigenous made about land management and change. Um, recently, we've been experimenting with a constructed 360 degree camera to investigate 360 degree experience. But I am just going to show you a grab from my phone. Here you go. Here you go. That's the blue river going out the mountain. That's the community just down there. Wood to just down there. Like the bloody community, eh? Mm -hmm. So what that um, begins to open up is the idea of augmented reality and it's bringing people into these environments and sharing stories in place. Um, when I started working with Victor Stevenson at the, in like 2003, video was his tool of recording the elders. And he spent many years recording elders' knowledge of the relational systems of plants, animals, their uses, connection to seasonal change. At that time, in a verbal way, you know, in a sound story, at that time, our hope was, and we're in that moment where the digital was going to solve all of our problems, <laughs> we had a hope for the digital repository and the enabling of the knowledge through digital accessibility, the holding of the lost knowledge, the allowing access for people. We spent a lot of time developing a database, analysing categorisation models and working with IT professional, professionals, knowledge management, postgraduate, librarian students, imagining a database 
that could communicate the relational knowledge systems of Indigenous understandings. But we could not fit the circular connected knowledge system into the database functionalities. And our emphasis turned. We became focused on the recognition of the knowledge as a living knowledge um, that required life and experience, on country mentoring, sharing, building resilience on country with people and practices. So now the challenge is to represent place country, to share the meaning of the knowledge and the complexity of the stories. This work is participatory, participatory and collaborative and specific to particular places. In my research, I've begun to de develop this glyph where we begin to kind of try to reconcile these world views of place and country. So the writing of, so I just want to talk a little bit about place and country. Um, and I'm following on from the references that we've had. I worked a lot, have worked a lot with Edward S. Casey because I kept turning back to wondering about how we were so different in our views on place. And as a non-Indigenous person, it was inappropriate for me to uh, appropriate another way. So um, Edward Casey provided an entry point and into the literature of the resurgence of interest in place in Western philosophy in the late 20th century. He claims that place is much more than locator, rather place belongs to the very concept of existence. Place, according to Casey, is somewhere. It is a particular part of space that also holds what Casey refers to as the return to place, a philosophic conception of the primacy of place. Place is brought into being through a physical and perceptive apprehension and contains the functional, the visual and the symbolic. Likewise, the European Landscape Convention in 2000 refers to the physical and material value of landscape and Fiona and um, Christy have all touched on this. The importance of perceptual engagement, the visual and perceptive quality, Cultural, cultural significance and the role of landscape in the formation of local cultures and identity. Place quality is considered essential to individual and social well-being. Place quality is the expression of the specificity of places and a factor in the identity of populations. A cultural dimension is attributed to the entire territory which includes the social perception that people have of their living places and historical and cultural perceptions. A, ke a connection in these um, sort of definitions that come out of a Western uh, discourse, the connection is made in this understanding of place between the necessity for the maintenance of these characteristics and individual and social. However, in 1968, in his Boyer lecture, Stanner said, no English words are good enough to give a sense of the links between an Aboriginal group and its homeland. A different tradition leaves us tongueless and earless towards this world of meaning and significance. I'm going to go back to the diagram that I showed you before because this is my attempt. It's the beginning of trying to reconcile, work across knowledge systems and find a graphic representation. So in 1967, um, Stanner said we could not, we couldn't, our words, we couldn't hear it, we couldn't speak it, we couldn't understand. But I would argue that now with the inclusion of Indigenous voices in scholarly discourse, we are able to listen to First Nations voices and begin to hear the meanings of what had been previously relegated to myth by colonial perspectives. We have a lot to learn as First Nations voices enter into dialogue with our traditional discourses. And in this, my speaking, I am uh, I'm very grateful to Sandra Styers and Bob Randall in this next little section, because I'm working with um, Sandra Styers as a Canadian First Nations educator, um, trying to decolonize education processes. And she has um, tried to express what country and how country can be seen. So I'm working with her words, I'm working with Bob Randall words. So from my understanding and the sharing of Aboriginal community members and voices published about country, country is connected but distinct and is more than physical geographic space. Country expresses a duality, 
that refers not only to place as a geographic space, but also the underlying conceptual principles, philosophies, and ontologies of that space. Country is spiritual, emotional, and relational. Country is sentient. Country refers to the ways that we honour and respect her as a sentient and conscious being. Country is both a fundamental sentient, public, uh, sentient being and also a philosophical construct. So this ongoing work, particularly when working on Indigenous-led initiatives, has brought into clarity for me a particular, probably undeveloped understanding of country and the agency of place. Um, and I'd like to share a bit with you about what I've learnt, about how I've come to understand what working with country means and how um, transdisciplinary understandings are about the apprehension of multiple simultaneous levels of experience and differing worldviews, because that sort of is the underpinning of my practice. Country as a theoretical and philosophic concept, concept comprises storied and journeyed connections of self in relationship, relationship to each other, relationship to our places and to all interpretation and meaning making that's gone before. And this is where it's very interesting when we look at Trove, we look at the amazing resources that we've got to draw on. Um, but there is a distinct difference sometimes. And Bob Randall, uh, in talking, who's an Aboriginal man from um, Northern Territory, spoke, speaks, one is water, one is the tree. A group of people is a people mob. A group of trees is a tree mob. And what he's trying to talk about there is that the kinship is very deep and the connections between those things, are, we are all those things as we engage with them. Um, so it's a primary conception of unity that is not familiar in non-Indigenous Australia. It might be said that it indicates that all things are primarily conceived of in terms of their unity, whilst difference is fully acknowledged but is not emphasised. This unitary association is understood to be very deep so that when it is successfully internalised, the person's self-image incorporates a view of country as intimately linked with self. This understanding is significant for me as a designer in the co-creation of transformed perspectives on the representation that places country at the centre. And this is this diagram. Once you place country at the centre, um, the world changes. Um, in a really interesting way because, you know, in a Western um, perspective, we're always trying to analyse outside ourselves, but when you bring it in, um, you are holding it. And there's some work that's been done in, you know, ecofeminism and eco-psychology that supports this, and I'll just um, refer to that. Landscape is understood to hold cultural meaning that it's produced by the intersection of experience of people and knowledge of place, in place, and the Indigenous view describes connectedness that does not position the landscape outside self as artefact, but resonates with it. And I think that is the key understanding that I have learned. Um, so with the emergence of an understanding of that connected self, which I have come to call the in place designer, it's been informed by the notion of the ecological self, an idea that emerged from the deep ecology movement and eco-psychology, in which the ecological ego matures towards a sense of ethical responsibility toward the planet that is vividly experienced as our ethical responsibility to other people. So the in-place designer always initiates a uh, project or a practice around place. And this orientation requires certain things. Firstly, it requires an, an understanding and acceptance of the relational qualities of place as the intersecting ecologies of the social, the biophysical and the artificial, understood as people, knowledge and experience. And secondly, it requires the recognition of place as an active participant with agency. And that is a really heartbreaking thing when we stand in Australia and um, think about, you know, 
country with agency that can actually speak to us. Um, so this relational understanding of emplacement or ecological embeddedness requires attention, listening, advocacy and representation and produces a profound reorientation of self in relation to the environment and ecological identity emerges from a process of learning to perceive connections and relations with natural processes. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much.